Frozen. Hello and welcome to episode 231 of the 77 Club. Harry, start with the socials. The Wall 77 Club on Facebook and Instagram at 77 Club Podcast on Twitter. Please write us five stars on Spotify as well. Uh, Bayliss is here. Hello. And Mr. Happy Jack Williams. Hi, everybody. Hope you all had a lovely summer. <laughs> Um, Harry, we started out last week saying um, it was all very exciting. Uh, we meant it as a joke, and then we talked about how great it was that Lopetegui was staying. And um, a week is a very long time in football, it seems, especially uh, where Wolverhampton Wanderers are concerned. He has left the club. There were re- rumblings on the Monday that it might happen, and we were like, "No, no chance. That's just somebody making it up." And then it sort of picked up. All the journalists locally were pretending they had the scoop, um, and in the end. He, he left the club by mutual consent. I can't believe it still. Um, I know Bayliss last week actually mentioned he'd be surprised if he's here for Christmas, and I kind of <laughs> laughed at that. But, uh, yeah, mate, um, when I, when the story started to break from Alex Crook at TalkSport, I think it was, I was with a lot of people thinking it was fake. Um, obviously, our local journalists just haven't got a clue. This this confirms it. <laughs> this is so true. Like They know some stuff, but the really good stuff we need to know, like, Nathan Judah and that ain't got a clue what's going on. Um, yeah, it really shocked, but it turns out he wanted to leave after the Celtic game. So yeah. it's one of them, isn't it? And I'm still good, to be honest. It's still very raw, isn't it? It really is. And Bayliss, we were we were talking last night of someone who had left the club, which was Tony Roberts, and left around at that time of the Celtic game, I think. And that probably makes a little bit more sense now, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's very weird I, this is could go into all sorts of depths of different weird theories and things can't it it's um i don't think i've ever we've ever spoken on a podcast with such a bizarre situation that's happened in the 48 hours leading up to it mm-hmm. um so we're going to be a bit like the express and star this evening and be completely speculative about everything that's happened um and we'll take most of our news from twitter uh, <laughs> Because none of us have a clue, I don't think. <laughs> um, and we're opening up the comments. Please share your thoughts because you know as much as we do. Well, I think Ben sums it quite nicely. Uh, what a fucking disaster. Uh, I, think, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's absolutely right, Ben. Uh, Jack, we've uh, lost a manager who was brought in to ensure survival of the team and he accomplished it and we've replaced him with a man who was brought in to ensure survival of his team back last August. Uh, Gary O'Neill has joined but before we start on Gary O'Neill just just your thoughts on Lopetegui because it does seem a really really weird one to sort of go he's obviously been promised something that's been taken away and going oh it's going to be cheaper potential signings then it was going to be free transfers and then we can't afford the free transfers it, it just seems like, as Ben said, a fucking disaster. It's it's just a comical laughing stock, really. It just I don't don't really know what to make of it. Even when we heard all these rumours flying around, like we thought taken with a pinch of salt, really. I don't know whether we were just a little bit in denial, but this last 24, 36 hours just feels a bit like a dream. I still can't quite believe what's happened or that we've let it happen, that we've let it happen this close to the start of the season. The, all this stuff that's been going on behind the scenes, and like you say, everyone really has been oblivious. Everyone's come out with a good scoop now saying all this happened after the Celtic game. Nobody knew anything until yesterday lunchtime, really. And it's broken by a, a non wars related journalist, just a, a mainstream media journalist, really. Uh, but there's this just... It's very difficult to even look where to start with it. And I know people have come out. Most people are blaming Fosun. Some people are blaming Lopetegui. For me, it's all at the door of Fosun this because they they must have known about this situation when they got him in to give him the job to basically come in and save us, which somehow he did. Remember how bad we were under Large? And I'm not saying we were great under Lopetegui, but we could win games. Winning games keeps you up. It doesn't matter if you lose 6 nil or 5 nil in a couple of games. You get 9, 10 wins, you're going to stay in the Premier League. And that's what happened. And we did it you know, relatively comfortably. And he thought, OK, I've earned my stripes now. People know that I can do this. I've been promised X, Y and Z. X, Y, and Z doesn't materialise. And okay, fair enough. I think we say, okay, we've got to be careful with financial fair play. We've been stung with it before. So even a couple of months ago, Jeff said, like, to manage our expectations, right, okay, guys, you know, financial fair play, we can only sign players in the eight eight to 15 million pound bracket. I think most reasonable Wolves fans said, okay, we're not Chelsea, you can't spend 200 million pound on 
rubbish every year and get away with it. We've got to be more sustainable. But we didn't even get the eight million pounds players, did we? We got Matt Doherty on a free, and that's it. And basically sold all of our assets in the process. So we had all this money coming in to sell it to balance the books. And I don't blame him for walking, really. Uh, it sounds actually like he's done quite well to actually not just quit. He said, right, I'll wait until you've got a manager in charge. And then we, the best we can do is Gary O'Neill. <laughs> so they do one interview with Gary O'Neill. Jeff Shee isn't in the country. He's not even here. And they're like, that'll do. Get him in. We know that for a make, fact. Make sure you go and beat Man United in a week's time. Not even a week's time. We know time. that she wasn't in the country. Apparently not. But again, I mean, well, that's probably Twitter, a good thing, to be honest. Twitter said so. So Twitter's probably right, you know. <laughs> Let's be honest. And it's just, it really has come from nowhere. I was in denial about it. I thought it was just Twitter hearsay rumours and it's turned out to be completely true. And I, I don't blame Lopetegui for walking if he was made promises about having X, Y and Z. And then when it comes to it, it's OK, we've sold all your players. The expectation is a top half finish at least. And we're going to sign Matt Doherty. Good luck. <laughs> he's, he's setting himself up to fail it's just it's just ridiculous and the fact it's all come out this late in the day it's a shambles and the i was very um you, you guys know from talking to me in the whatsapp group i know i was on the pod last week but i was really unoptimistic about this season the only little glimmer of hope i had on paper was the manager so cheers wolves but luckily <laughs> i've got a, i've got a nice usb charger in the post so you know it's not all bad can't complain yeah, yeah. And, and, I, I, <laughs> and just just while i'm on my little rant at the start i know you've got people who uh you always get this group of cra crowd of people of fans are like oh you know you, it's not the player's fault you just get behind the team support gary but honestly just fuck them like uh, it's just <laughs> like we, we deserve to be we deserve to be relegated <laughs> so it's on this jesus six and a half <laughs> minutes is descending it, it has it has been a lot of uh, people on social media saying, you know, you've got to back the team and back the manager. However, Harry, this is Premier League football. And I know that when we're 3-0 down after 20 minutes against Man United, is that back the team and back the manager is probably not going to be on the lips of most Wolves fans, let's face it. It'll be, it won't be back the team and back the manager. It'll be the away end running out of Old Trafford trying to find Jeff Shee to hang him from a bridge somewhere, probably. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's, oh, I don't know. On, What's from the point of it, right? What's from the point of it? He can't turn up to a game this year. Well, no, he wasn't. Wasn't it? It? <laughs> <laughs> no, um... he can't come to a game. He'll get lynched. He will. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just, um, <sighs> I, I, like when Jack mentioned about people blaming Lopetegui, I, you can't. Mm. They they did say they I think it was Hobbs who came out and said you know that, that eight to fifteen million thing was the key one for me and look lopetegui has got a bit of a reputation for this you can't be surprised I thought he'd stick it out because I didn't think they'd come to an agreement with the money because he's on such big wages and they've paid out a lot of money to like get rid of him and his staff haven't they <laughs> which is mad we couldn't even afford to get Alex Scott so but they've got the money to pay him off it's ridiculous. Um, Gary O'Neill, very underwhelming. Like people were saying about Graham Potter, but I don't think Graham Potter would want to come to us. He probably thinks he's a bit higher than that. But all we can do is an underwhelming appointment, to say the least. Like I said, we might as well have Steve Davis. It's a similar sort of thing, a caretaker manager coming in, really. I mean, hang about though. He kept he kept Bournemouth up and Bournemouth have no you gate seen game. the statistics, Bayliss? Yeah, they are awful. Jesus but well, hang right. about, hang about. A lot of their statistics came from so they they sacked Parker after that nine nil loss to Liverpool, didn't they? And then they drew with us. His first game. And then they drew with them. But I think he got what, did, what was his? Well, he, he uh, here, here it is. So he he had thirty four games in charge, ten wins, six draws, eighteen losses. 35 goals for, 55 against. Okay. Lopetegui's record, 23 games, 9 wins, 4 draws, 10 losses, uh, 23 for and 34 against. Don't... That's a big difference in goals scored. But, I mean, I said it on the group, you know, when you when you look at it and you look at those results, is that was there there were two games out of there that where Wolves won by more than one goal. And it is the finest of margins. And I know, you know, he's kept us in a league and everything, but that, that is so, so tight for that many 1-0 win margins. Because um, it could have ended completely differently and it could have been a flop. And I have always been a little bit reserved with Lopetegui and haven't really sung his praises probably as much as I should have done. I remember going on the Everton podcast last season and saying that, you know, we're talking about this elite manager who has, you know, done... Two years managing Spain, got sacked before a World Cup because he's wanted to go to Real Madrid. He's got sacked by Real Madrid three months into his tenure. He's won one 
Europa League with Sevilla, who are Europa League FC, and then move to Wolves. So I think, you know, he, we, I think we've, we ha- hold him in quite high regard on the basis that he's got on his Wikipedia page, Spain, Real Madrid and Sevilla. So a Porto on there as well, we'll see anything. But, you know, I, I don't know. I think I, I agree with Jack and Bayless. It, it's very, very underwhelming and agree with Harry that maybe someone like Graham Potter would be potentially looking at Wolves, yeah. one of those clubs where you've potentially got a little bit of a project to work on even though your your hands are tied financially. <laughs> but, you know, we've got a Category A academy with, with hardly any players, it seems, coming through it, apart from the, the odd one. And I just don't know, the, the maths don't add up. And it's not like Lopetegui didn't spend any money either, because we're going, OK, well, we've got our money back for Cunha through selling Neves. And the, the, I, I don't understand but, it. But the fans that have said, well, bugger Lopetegui then. And let's just now, what, the, no matter how crap the situation, we've got to get behind him. I sort of get it right. Lopetegui did have the arrogance to say, oh, Harry's gone. Um, Lopetegui did have the arrogance to say, if I, if I can't spend money, I'm off. And if that's the attitude, sometimes the management has been very poor by the owners and recruitment and everything that's happened behind that. And we'll get onto that point. But if a manager isn't going to work with what he's got, then that's a pretty poor attitude to have. You can't just it, lay it all at Foson's door, even though their management of it has been horrendous. And it really it though, has Dan? been. Is it though, Dan? So if let's say in your position or whatever, you start a new job and they say, right, after six months, if you hit your targets, you get a 50 grand bonus. And when you've hit your targets after six months, they give you your check and you open it. It's just a big picture of Matt Doherty. What are you going to do? <laughs> you're going to stay right? there, are you? Like it seems like it's the case. Yeah, I think there's a lot of false promises going on, basically, because we're in a desperate position. We needed to get this manager in because we thought he might keep us up. He has kept us up. Granted, we spent in January because we had to to preserve to preserve our 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 survival, and it worked. But I think all those sort of false false promises we made to get the man in and get the job done have now come to the door, and there's no real plan B, and it's just uh, the relationship's gone. And it seems to happen quite a lot. The relationship breaks down between Foson and the manager. This isn't the first time. It happened with Nuno after mm-hmm. after so long. I think that's why he left. They've got many a managerial appointment wrong. Without Nuno, we'd, we'd be nowhere. We'd, we'd probably still be in the championship, like gobbing, bob, bobbing up and down, trying to make the playoffs. And... It's, it just shows, that, I, I don't know, so, so, something's gone wrong and it's just the, the way it's come about just, just doesn't bode well. One other point I want to make is one point that really annoys me is the fact that financial fair play should be renamed. It's got nothing to do with fair play. It's nothing to do with fair play. It's just about sustainability of the club in question. If it was fair play, Chelsea and Man City wouldn't be able to go every season and spend £200 million more than everybody on crap. It only seems to affect teams like us, to be honest with you. We're the ones who who have to suffer the rules from it and get fined for, for these sorts of things. If you've got a blank checkbook, it's fine. And is that fair play? Saying you can buy wherever you want, spend whatever you want because you've got a load of all money behind you. No, that's not fair play. It needs to be renamed. It's a stupid term. I completely agree. So, Harry, where, where do we go from here? We just got to... God, I've just dropped out there, so I hope I don't repeat what you lot are saying. But we've just got to, we've got to back him. Well, you can't blame Gary O'Neill. He's got the opportunity of a lifetime. He's going to he's going to be a yes man. You've got to back him. What you know? We can't. What we're going to do? Just pray we get relegated. We support Wolves in the, the day. As unhappy as I am, and as, as much of a shit show it is, we've got to get behind the man. He might surprise us. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. I think we will go down now. But I hope I'm wrong, and I hope he can get the performance like we saw against Wren the weekend in that 3-1 win where the players looked amazing. If you can get that sort of tune out of them every week, we might surprise people. So I hope, certainly not I, the, I hope the we do. Worst. I, hope he's, like, I hope he clicks. It's certainly not the worst starting eleven in the Premier League by a mile, wouldn't you agree, Dan? I think, I you know, think there's the a lot, lot of reasons to be cheerful in, in that sense. I don't think the league's that strong. I think this is probably one of the weakest Premier Leagues of all time. I agree. Um, I, I'm not as doom and gloom as people might think. I I think we have got the players, albeit we're a bit thin on the ground. And the guy isn't a terrible manager. He he did a good job with Bournemouth with very limited resources. And he's got the same thing here and he needs to do it. But we have got some decent players. It looks like Nunes played well against... um, Wren. Wren. It looks like Fabio Silva looks very hungry and looks like he actually wants to play football. Um, the Twiglet man looked 
pretty good, held the ball up well. So, I mean, he will break at some point. It's inevitable, isn't it? If you're six foot five and built a twigs, it's, you're going to go. Pedence is back. He is, yeah. yeah. He was back in the fold now, isn't he? He's posted on Instagram just straight away as soon as Lopetegui leaves. He sort of come out of the mouse hole. Uh, it does look <laughs> like... Take a picture. <laughs> it does look like we are two injuries away from disaster. I mean, the bench is going to be full of under-23s, under-21s, right? We haven't got Possibly. a proper squad. With a... With a point to prove certainly um but i think there are two there are two decent players bar maybe missing a center back in each position across the pitch i would say is the yeah Go. we have we haven't replaced what what's gone have we and whether whether you can say the players that have gone obviously some of them were proper first team starters some of them have been around the first team for you know the last two or three seasons and as you see in the Premier League now, and you, Dan said just about how the standard of the Premier League, I don't think is good this year. And I, I agree with that. But thinking about it, I think it's just going to be like it was last year, where the top half are very good, the bottom half are not that good, and there'll be two mini leagues that sort of appear again, like like happened last year, really. Yeah, will be. And they'll just the, the, it's going to turn into I don't want to say like like La Liga, but it will turn into the, the, the league where the top half are just country miles above the, the bottom half, and that that's the worry about it. And you know. The one thing that's give, maybe positive is you guys have praised the performances in, in pre-season and said, you know, on paper, we've been playing well and these sorts of things. But playing well under Lopetegui, that's the worry. And now I, I do have sympathy for, for Gary O'Neill. Well, not well, you know, he, he's taken the job. He knows the circumstances. It's going to be toxic if we go the first three or four games without getting a result. It's going to be really, really bad. And they'll be calling for him to go pretty soon. So he's 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 got... He's coming into a very difficult situation where a manager that not perfect, but all of us liked and all of us wanted really to see him us back him in the summer to be replaced at short notice and have to take over a club that's a laughing stock off the pitch and try and keep them up with players who previously in the past we've all probably said to each, about each and every one of them, apart maybe you know the new additions like the Mina and those, that, those sort of players aren't probably good enough for where we want to be. It's it's a hell of a task, and obviously I, I want him to do well. But at the moment, just with the way the last the few days or months have gone, I, don't, I just don't see it. Like another thing as well, I remember because remember quoting about uh, them saying, "Okay, we're going to only be able to spend in the eight to fifteen million pound bracket," which we're all happy with. We signed some great players for between the eight to fifteen million pound bracket. But also, did you remember Lopetegui saying, "Right, I want all my squad in place by you know middle of July, so I have a proper pre season and." We never yeah. seem to do that, and that's well, not happened, yeah. so I don't think that's well, helped Jack, either. Just, but, does anybody just, do that, though? Nah. Well, it'd be, nice, it'd be nice to sign somebody, though, wouldn't it? You know, it doesn't have to be everybody, but it'd be nice to get somebody in rather than just outgoings that time, so you actually have a t- t- chance to work with them pre-season. But just, I don't know. Jack, just touching on the point you made there, you said that there is now a clear division between the league. There is a top half and there's a bottom half, and I totally agree with that. That's the point that makes me really angry is we were clearly well cemented in that top half of teams. Mm. Yeah, We were 7th out of 10, and we bottled it a couple of times going even higher than that. The thing that's really disturbing and should piss the fans off more is how the ownership of taking a team that was very, very good, sold players on for a profit, and then recruited so badly and made the wrong decision. And expensively and made the wrong decision with managers, and now alienated the fans, which they've done at points over the last few years anyway. But now it's they've completely lost the fans. The fans, the fans and Foson will not see eye to eye ever again. I think the relationship's had it. They, there's nothing they can do. I know they said they're not going to sell the club, but any of you three trust them? I, I think no. you've said before that like they might not be that interested now and it's just about trying to keep us in the Premier League for the smallest budget and churning it over as that sort of asset rather than taking us to the level that we thought they would and they said they were going to try to when they first came in and obviously with the first they didn't get right at the start obviously think back to the the Walter Zegner days but obviously the post Nuno days we all thought it was happening didn't we we thought we were going to be Newcastle or you know looking like Aston Villa do now to be honest like that that sort of team but it's just uh a lot, a lot of it has to come down to, to, I think, bad boardroom decisions, bad boardroom recruitment and bad spending on players, unwise spending, should we say, right. overspending and these sorts of things. So when you have a look at, if you have a look at Fosun themselves and the range of companies they manage, they aren't doing particularly well anywhere, really. I think their entertainment business is up slightly. And other than that, they're an absolute shower of shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are. I think that's, that is true. That is true. And, and yeah. what... 
and it's now completely evident, and it's now been cemented home. It has been many times, but it's now evidently clear that what they say and what they do are two completely different things. And that, mm. that's true, right? They are, they cart out the horse shit to try and keep people happy. They send absolutely ridiculous open letters mm-hmm. to try and appease people. But in the background, at the end of the day, they're an investment management firm and they do not give a fuck about us four, the people watching this, the people listening, or anyone else that engages with Wolves Football Club. And Jeff will not come near the stadium. We won't see him. He won't be welcomed if he does come anyway. And they've said they aren't going to sell. And I think the only way that we will get them to sell, if it does go to shit this year, is by the fans forcing them out. Not that I'm suggesting doing anything, but I think the fans will have to take action to get them out. Uh, Stu says we've got a larger budget now compared to when we first came up. It's not what you spend, it's how you spend it. I completely agree with that. And actually, when we came up, obviously getting Matinho for, what was it, £5 million, pounds, obviously was on big wages, so that comes into play. Rao was bought in, loan to buy. I'm just shocked, Harry, that we haven't made more use of the loan market um, with a view to spreading the cost of those payments to you know play the game with FFP and bring in who you want to bring in, like Chelsea do. Tie them to you know an eight-year deal and sign it off over a period of time and be, be clever with your accounting. That's the sort of thing that you need to do, but we, we just haven't done that at all. That's what surprised me with what Lopetegui said, didn't he? That he, he after Doherty, it was kind of like you're not having loans, you're not even having free transfers, you're not having nothing. So that really does shock me. I agree. And they've tried to use that, haven't they? As years have gone by, that you know the loans are buying all that. But that comment from Stu is spot on because we've mentioned last week the amount of money we've spent on shit is just ridiculous. Like Cunha and Nunes, too much money. Fabio Silva, too much money. Samedo, too much money. Collins, yeah, we got our money back. Guedes, disaster. Why don't we go for the Dawsons, the Laminas, and people like that? We've got to do that more often when the FFP restarts and they have a go at it again, if they ever do, and they don't sell. Or if we get the chance to, because it could mm. end in relegation. Could be down, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the problem we're in now. <laughs> They've made so many mistakes, haven't they, the last few years? They've, it's Jeff. Jeff's clueless. Got rid of Dalrymple, got rid of Farewell. Anyone who stands up to him, he gets rid of. He's made terrible decisions with the managers, apart from Nuno. Every other manager, really, has been a disaster. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty um, true. I, 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 yeah, no, I agree. And, I, you know, a lot of people hark back to sort of Dalrymple, and, and I do get that a little bit. But I think there's probably something in the fact that he's gone to a rugby side uh, rather than another Premier League team snapping him up. Um, obviously, Farewell has, has stayed within football. I know he had a beer with like... the fans. He had a beer with the fans, Sam. You can't say yeah. that. No, no, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I, I, yeah, I don't... I think being a championship club, and you can probably afford to be a little bit more family orientated, especially when things are going well, because it is it's very easy to say, yeah, that's brilliant, we got promoted. Because nobody's looking at Fosun now, who was there, obviously when Dalrymple was here and thinking about all of the success in relative terms to what we're used to that's happened on the pitch and off it as well. Sam, what they've slowly done is take away the football people from the club and it's now a business. And sadly, letting a little back, sorry, uh, letting a little banker run the football club without any football. Oh, what are you going to say then? I was <laughs> I, it's, I mean, I nearly called him a wanker, pull, but he is a banker. I was about to pull the ball. Um, <laughs> Dan, we can't be getting cancelled this week. It is too much. I'm not getting cancelled. I called him, he's a little banker. That's his job. That's what he does. Okay, letting yes. him run the club without football people around him now, and he's just getting advice from Mendes, who's only after a check, is slowly degrading the football club and we've seen as the time's gone on the decisions have got worse and worse mm-hmm. and we are where we are now one thing that is good i do like hobbs he's better than sellers i think matt hobbs comes across quite well definitely yeah and that he, is actually he's a very good a, point in a very very difficult situation but yeah he's doing his his job well um it'd be nice again if we sign some players i know that aaron cresswell is sort of might be happening again and obviously with maguire going to west ham it, it may happen now um, good experience. Um, obviously, won conference league last year. Um, but I suppose don't need him. Actually, no. Don't need him. No, no, no true, true. Um, all eyes will be on. I imagine thirty-six points, Jack. I was looking at 
the stats today and 36 points for the last five seasons in the Premier League um, would have been enough to stay up. Um, I think you've got to be looking at the teams that have come up. I mean, historically, we haven't done brilliantly against promoted teams. I think we maybe got, was it seven points or something along those lines from the promoted teams uh, last year? So, you know, where where do you foresee the points coming from? Is it, will it be the odd game in that in that top half where <laughs> you're potentially getting them, and then you've got to almost compete in that that mini league of ten? At, at the moment, I think we'd be lucky to get twenty. From the way I'm feeling, to be honest, it's probably not the best time to have this conversation because <laughs> at, at the moment the reality is, and I like trends and stuff. The reality is that since coming up to the Premier League, we've finished seventh, seventh, tenth, and then thirteenth last season. That is a downward graph, and I don't think you oh, usually good work. many teams. Well, no, <laughs> yeah, job work. You could do math, Stell boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't think usually you turn around that negative line by letting Brid, letting your best players go and not replacing them. So in my head, it's it's going to be until I've seen otherwise or seen a bit of investment at least. I know people keep saying that our first eleven is great, but as you said, we're a couple of injuries away from a, a Derby County special of eleven points probably. So until I've seen anything like that, I think it's going to be a real struggle. At the moment, 36 points seems quite far away. Where are the points going to come from? Just got to, I mean, we were bloody games. rubbish away from home last season. You've got to look at your home form, haven't you? Any team coming up has to look at their home form and say, it doesn't matter who we're playing, we need to at least try and get a result from this game. And that's Realistically, we've we got to beat the promoted teams, the, the Everton's, Brentford's, Fulham's, West Ham's at home. Brighton's. Well, that, that, that should do it. <laughs> right. then, you know what I mean? We've got to beat the promoted Well, no, I agree. I think if we, if, we, if we can oh. aim to get 10 points off the promoted sides, um, you know, that's whether that be three wins and whack a draw in there out of the six games, then you're looking at 25 points across the league. I think it's more than doable. Um, like I say, it's going to be fine margins as it was fine margins last season. And if it, if Gary O'Neill can come in and be a little bit more, using the words that everyone throws around, a little bit more pragmatic, a little bit more progressive. And I think from what Bournemouth fans are saying, that he is a pretty shit manager, uh, but will probably get the best out of the players and make them believe in themselves and all of that sort of stuff. You know, he did it with a squad that realistically was not good enough to stay in the Premier League and he, he did turn it around. I mean, they shipped goals, but at the end of the day, he got the points on the board to make sure that they were competing in the league next season. Just just looking, I've just pulled our fixtures up just to have a, have a look at where I think the points are going to come from. And our start, I think, as we've said, is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, So our first game, just to read them as I go, Manchester United, Brighton, Everton, Palace, Liverpool. (laughs) I think it's it's possible we could have not won a game up to that point. We might have got a point somewhere, but not have a win. And our next game after that is against Luton. Can you imagine if that Luton game suddenly turns into a must win because of this expectation oh. we have just of Luton being a newly promoted playoff team with a shit ground, quite a, you know, quite a, a small club, small budget. And if ever we get to that point needing to win and we don't win, I don't think Gary O'Neill will be here very long, <laughs> to be mm. honest. Ryan Giles winner as well. Stuff. But luckily Ryan though, after, after 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 the looting game, we've got another easy one, which is Man City. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, it's almost like this. It, it's that thing about like when you've got nothing to lose and you just go for it and you play freely. It, it's like when teams get relegated and, and they start turning up because the pressure's off. I don't. I don't think there's any pressure on this Wolf side. No one's having to go at the players. Uh, we've actually had a very good pre-season, I think. Um, compared to previous ones. So I think mm. reasons to be cheerful in that sense. Didn't uh, Jeff Shee say we've got to tr- have the attitude that we've just been promoted again in his open letter? Pretty much. And we... <laughs> I, Said I it all, didn't it? What, 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 what do you even say to that, really? I mean, um, that was weird, wasn't it? That letter was weird. That was basically yeah. a sort of, right, you're not going to like this. I already know what's going on behind the scenes when he's written that. And so I'm going to try and get you on side. I don't think he has by... put a single finger near that letter. Of course not. It's no Jeff sign here. Yeah. Do. <laughs> he's been nowhere near it. He was all a lot of gobbledygook, wasn't it? A lot of nothing. Right, can oh, we move off from this? We, we will do. Jumping the <laughs> we'll river. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Your cricket went well. No. Uh, right, okay. Uh, let's have a look at some predictions. 
I think, for the season, and then we'll go on and pre- preview the the nice easy opener that we have uh, at Old Trafford on Monday night football. Uh, Harry, I'll start with you. Who do you... <laughs> seems completely pointless in this? Uh, who do you think will be the Wolves Player of the Season? I think the obvious answer is Nunes. Ellis. I'm going to try to be optimistic. So if we're going to stay up, then it's going to be Fabio Silva. Jack? If we stay up, I think we'll have to pick a defender. And from what I saw last season, I think Craig Dawson probably kept us up last season, to be honest. So Craig Dawson. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Gomez of the Joe variety. Um, I think he could step yeah. into to, uh, to Nevers' shoes. Although I think, I think Fabio Silva has looked very, very good. Still only 21, but I'm going to go Gomez. Uh we know Harry. that he'll be gone next week after, after yeah, this, the way it's yeah, going. No, yeah, like, exactly. Every player for... that we name now will be, will be sold by next week's podcast. Uh, dark horse, Harry. My dark horse is Pedence. Gary O'Neill is going to give a new lease of life and he's going to be a monster. <laughs> An angry Jack Russell monster. Uh, Bayliss. I don't know. A lot of people on Twitter have slagged off Matt Doherty about him coming back and never go back and stuff. And I'm sort of of attitude, but I'd love him to be the dark horse. Well, you've been crying for him to to be Come back. Hey, if he scores yeah, four or five know. goals, that could be the difference between up and down. Well, he if he That's scores great four shout or five goals, he will be our top goal scorer. Uh, I didn't even think about him. That's a great shout. I think Jack. Well, one player that I'd like to, I know he's been featuring a bit more in pre-season, which has been promising, but at one point looked completely lost under Lopetegui, is Aiton Ori. I'd like him to come mm-hmm. in and, you know, yeah. just to show the stuff that he was showing, particularly at the, the, at the start when he came in. And there's definitely a player in there, isn't there? Um, so, Both games he's looked good. Yeah, Great volley okay. against Ren as well. That was yeah. Paxton. Mm. Place. So yeah, I'd like him to. Uh, there's a few players who you know have seen seem to have been on the fringes, like Pedence, who uh, Harry just mentioned, who you know could could come back into the fold really under a new manager because it's a, it's a fresh start for them, isn't it? Really, they've got to, they can go and prove themselves, and they can um, you know prove Lopetegui, whoever it was who was keeping them out of the team wrong. So I hope that they do, and we need them too. That's what we need to happen, really. Otherwise, we will go down. I am going to go for Joe Hodge, uh, featured a little bit in preseason. Ooh. Depends um, what happens. Probably with injuries, um, but we'll wait and see. Obviously, you know, I, th- I thought Lamina did really, really well since he came in uh, last season. As Jack mentioned, Craig Dawson as well. Um, that bit of experience as well. Uh, let's move on to uh, the league position and cup rounds. Harry, we'll start with the Premier League position. Eleventh. Eleventh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, no, after really everything yeah. we just said, eleventh, you would absolutely bite your hand off. It means that we'd be top of the B League. Uh, Bayliss, Premier League finish. Sixteenth. I think there's 16th, enough in the. Yeah. I think there's enough. That I we'll think there get some results. I think so. I do think so. Jack, I'm torn at the moment in my head, but I don't think it matters because I'm torn between 18th and 19th. Okay, so I'll be so optimistic and go with 18th. <laughs> right. That is the same as Phil McNulty at the BBC uh, said 18th along with wow. Sheffield United and Luton. Uh, I, I'm going to go with somewhere in between Harry and Bayliss. So I'm going to go for a same finish as last year. I'm going to go for 13th so that we can take that downward trajectory and then even it out. And then obviously we'll, we'll be on the up from then on um harry let's have a look at the carabao cup <laughs> out first round whatever round we're in fair uh Bayless. oh yeah we it depends if we get the first round doesn't it but it's second round that we play in i don't know what actual round that is fourth round is another one uh it might be the second round actual um jack uh, out in the first round we're playing, which I think is, can be the second round or maybe in the third round. I can't remember, but we'll be out the first game anyway, I think. There's, there's, it's pointless for us in opposition. The first, the, think about it. Yeah. Um, Harry, FA Cup. Semi-final. <laughs> Love this. <laughs> um, Bayliss. Uh, the first round we enter at, which is the third, third round. Third round. Third round, yeah. Third uh, round as will... well, yeah. 
We will lose at home to Bognor Regis Town. That's okay. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Jack? Third round as well. Probably get battered by Wrexham. I oh, think God, maybe fourth, that? A fourth round seemed... Well, they lost to MK Dons, didn't they? Apps. <laughs> Fuck them as well. My God. Imagine them climbing up the ladder and another one to compete with. Anyway, uh, I think... Yeah, I reckon we'll go out of the League Cup at the first hurdle. I reckon we'll probably get to the fourth round, go out fourth round the FA Cup. Um, you know, birthday weekend ruined. Uh, the other one, Harry, um, which which could be very low scoring, is the top goal scorer. Cunha. Cunha. Uh, the expensive Cunha. Uh, Bayliss. Let's go Fabio Silva. Mm-hmm. Jack, um, pipe cleaner legs. Why not? You're gonna get a Kalajic. Yeah, you can't. You can't hit a barn door, but we'll, we'll, neither can any of us. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Fabio Silva for that one. Harry, top assists. Huang. Oh, Bayless. Only because I watched him deliver a decent corner. The first decent corner I've seen in, from a wall shirt in five years was um, Salabia, who I don't think has played very well, but he seems to put a decent corner in. So maybe he'll get some assists as well. Jack? See, this Matt Doherty could be a shout for this, actually, if he, if he comes back the player that he was before. Because he, he got a few assists as well as goals, didn't he? But I'm going to go with Neto. He's still about, isn't he? So I think. Just about. Just yeah. about, yeah. Um I will go. F- I think Wang's a good shout, actually. Um, although it could be a strike. I think there's a good strike partnership brewing between Cunha and Fabio. So, as I said, f- did I say Fabio was going to be top goal scorer? I'll go Cunha having uh, the top assists. I'm going to see some good link up. So Fabio's a great shout in the comments. Yeah, same as Bayliss. Um, okay, well, we will obviously. Play them at the end of the season if we make it. <laughs> we might have gone bust by then. Uh, we'll see what happens. But let's preview. Should we do a controversial Manchester. opinion, Sam? A controversial opinion. Well, I think you've had yours with eleventh, but yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Gary to win season. Gary O'Neill to win manager of the season. <laughs> that is controversial. Uh, Bayliss, your controversial opinion. Uh, Jeff Shee will be found hanging by his underpants from one of the flagpoles on the top of Molyneux. Probably not too controversial <laughs> right now. Um, Jack, controversial. I said, I said it earlier, Gary O'Neill will be sacked after the looting game. After the looting I, game. I will, we'll, pay, we'll pay him three years away. <laughs> three-year just... deal, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Could have had two Alex Scotts by the time we've got the right manager in charge. Uh, controversial opinion. Mm. Uh, Bentley is a better goalkeeper than Jose Sarr. I said it. I said it. Controversial opinion. Uh, right, OK. Let's have a look at Manchester United away. It is a case of waiting to see how everybody else gets on the weekend with Monday Night Football, Harry. Where do you even start? You've probably got a couple of days to get your fantasy Premier League teams in, by the way. We do have a league going, which is uh, populating with people quite quickly. So do go and check the socials for that. But Rather than the fantasy Premier League, it's the actual Premier League. What's that starting eleven, Harry? It's probably not going to be far off. You'd imagine the same as it started against Rem, but let's just hear you hear you say it out loud. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping it's a four four two. It, well, I don't think it'd be the same thing that started against Wren. Um, I want Fabio Silva and Cunha up front, which I don't think will happen because he's probably a bit too ambitious to go to Old Trafford with. But yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Nunes on the right, Gomez, Lamina, Neto, or Huang on the left. And then the back four, take your pick. Eight, eight Norio Bueno, Dawson, Kilman, Samedo, and Sar in goal. Uh, Bayliss, you changed any of those? Really Doherty in for Samedo? Probably. The yeah. one time yeah. where you can do it and there's someone More that's well, genuinely. It, it's a bit of a lost hope, isn't it, this game? Like the manager doesn't even know the players. He's had two days to say hello to them and now he's got to pick 11 of them to go and play a game of football. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, this is literally Sunday League shit, isn't it? It's like, it's the fucking Taunton Turds. We are... How have I said this? On a podcast about a professional sports team? <laughs> it, oh, 
I don't give a, I don't give a toss anymore. Just whoever, <laughs> just stick them on the pitch. See how they Did play. you know Man United haven't lost a home game since the opening game of last season? Brilliant. Oh In God. Um, do we? No, I don't know much about Gary O'Neill or Gary O'Neill's style of football. Is it likely to be a formation change? Does he play? Yes. Uh, does someone it's say it's likely to be a yes. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, it's five three or a four. So yeah. Matt Doherty, come on down. Five at the back. <laughs> Ace of the attack. Co- what is that? Can is we that recall Tate Cody? Team? Can we re-sign him? <laughs> actually, yeah, he, he, yeah. He'd be perfect right now, actually, wouldn't he? <laughs> he'd be brilliant. <laughs> he would actually be helpful. Like, if he it backs against helpful. the wall, it would be quite helpful, wouldn't it? Yeah, but, but the eight and a half million quid is also quite helpful as well. So, yeah, I'd take the point, though. Um, so, what, Toti, Dawson, Kilman? Mm. That the, that's that's oh, the, that, the back five. And, and do we have any, any more centre backs than, than you just listed? Well, no, I don't think we have. <laughs> okay, thinking have to be then, wouldn't it? Well, who's is it? Farmer? Is it? Is that his name? We could do with some guy. farmers to fill in our positions. I think it was big. Like, actually, was the, a farmer. The big guy. Well, actually, do you remember when John, Johnny's played in, in the in centre back and he yeah, in the back five before? Away at Forest and <laughs> the League Cup. Yeah. <laughs> Owen Farmer, I'm thinking of. Um, but no, he is a striker. Uh, I can't think of which defender. I'm thinking, oh, I'm sure there was a defender in there. Oh, Dave has a party or no. Um, okay. I, I think he's probably not going to be far off that, is it? It's the bench that's going to be pretty hellish, I imagine. Um, you know, because, I mean, it wasn't brilliant last year and we've lost Matinho, Traore, Diego Costa and Neves. So... I think we, that that bench is going to be be youthful, and as as you know, you win nothing with kids. So, let's do a score prediction, Harry. Um, I think we're going to lose three 0 something like that. Bit of a valiant effort, and then once the floodgates open, we'll lose three 0 Bayliss, Alfie Pond, thank you, Steve Waterworth. Uh, That's the centre back. <laughs> Sorry, in the comments. Somewhere between four and six nil. Wow, that's um, Brighton and Arsenal territory. Jack, um, it'll be bad, but it won't be that bad. It'll be something like two nil to Man United, I'd, I'd imagine. But we just roll over and have our bellies tickled. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with an optimistic one-one. Um, do you want to see your optimistic. betting odds? That yes, come on, let's have a, let's have your betting news. It's good to have it back. They're, they are absolutely ridiculous. So, Man United to win 3-0 and Marcus Rashford to grab the first goal. That's a pretty, you know, that'll be up in the bookie mm-hmm. shot windows. Yeah, what do you yeah. think the price is on that? You know, a 3-0 win, Rashford score first. Is it is it less than 10-1? to 1? No, it's 20-1. to 1. Oh, so well, that's pretty, pretty good value. It's a sensible odd for a... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that involves Wolves is utterly ridiculous. But just to prove a point... Um, a one-all draw with Bruno Fernandes getting the first goal. So Manu score first. We equalise. One-all, sixty to one. Unlikely. Two-one Wolves. Huang Yi Chan to get the first goal. Two hundred to one. Three-two Wolves. Ryan Eight Nori to score the first goal. Two thousand to one. Two thousand. I didn't think they did <laughs> like that anymore. Two thousand to one. there. Yeah. If anyone offers you two thousand to one odds, take it because that. Oh yeah, no, that's ridiculous. Uh, Neil is deluded like Harry and says four one Wolves. Uh, Any Jack... odds on that? I can. Yeah, bear with me. Go on, Jack. Give us your prediction. Have you had your prediction? I said oh, two nil to Sorry. to Man United. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um... Um... What's the four one, Dan? For just two one, pieces. no goal scorers is, is two hundred to one. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I thought it would be. But put it that I know that bet so well now. <laughs> <laughs> just put it this way. Five nil Man United is only twenty five to one. That is low. Jesus. Six nil is, is only sixty six nil is only sixty six to one. Blimey. Uh what seven nil? <laughs> seven, seven to one. <laughs> they'll all stop as soon as you get past that price. Like it will be the same. No, price. no, no, it's still there. One hundred and twenty-five to one. Eight nil. Two hundred to one. <laughs> Let's be more positive. Um, Jack, has your ticket news? Um, yeah, about that. 
I kind of forgot about it because I haven't done oh. it in so long. But um, oh. and actually, another bit of information. I was just trying to get some sort of quickly. Then, how crap is the new Wolves ticket site now? They've changed to Ticketmaster. I don't know if any of you have experienced it yet, but gone Definitely. with the biggest, biggest, but also very controversial uh, ticketing platform, and yeah. they've somehow made it worse. They can't even get that right. So Didn't they mess up at Celtic, Jack. Then they put fans in with the Celtic fans by accident. I don't know if that was intentional just because it was a friendly, um, but oh, there, right. I, I did see stories about that and there was trouble apparently, wasn't there? Shock horror. Yeah. Um, just just but... while Jack's getting that ticket news, actually, H- Harry, you, you said in the group, I don't know if you were joking and maybe not, is that if this had happened before we were um, renewing our season tickets, would you have renewed? I was being very dramatic and sad at the time. I was always going to renew his party. It's in your blood, isn't it? I mean, if we renewed in League One, we're going to renew now, aren't we? I was just being dramatic, but it's upsetting. It is. It is. They have pulled the. They have pulled the wool yeah, over our eyes a bit, though. Yeah, they, they have. Yeah, so yeah. it's bad what they've done. But yes, of course, I've renewed. I'm an idiot. That's why. That's true. And we, we've got nothing better to do. To be fair, um, Jack, as your ticket news. Yeah, so I'll do a very brief one. Sorry, I haven't prepped. Obviously, Man United away on Monday night is uh, long sold out there. Uh, the first home game, which is a uh, home against Brighton on the 19th of August, 3 p.m. kickoff. There's still a few tickets uh, left for that, knocked around, uh, just in sort of the family enclosure and the temporary stand. Um, currently on sale to members. The next game after that is the away game at Everton on Saturday the 26th. That is currently available to the away season ticket holders on the points and the, with the ballot winners as of next Wednesday. Uh, we just recently, I think today it popped out, was the uh, ticket information for the away game at Crystal Palace, which is a Sunday, two o'clock, live on Sky Sports, so you don't have to go. There's also train strikes. I'm not really trying to sell it to you because uh, it'll probably be grim anyway. But um, yeah, those are on sale uh, this week to the away season ticket holders as well, which I think and on the points a bit later date. It might be next week, actually. Could have got that completely wrong because I'm not actually reading it. I'm just doing it off the top of my head. Excellent. Uh, perfect. Right. Well, um, is there anything else to to talk about Harry. I'll just um the I'm FPL honest. code is M A Y O M C if you want to join our FPL fantasy league. No prizes, but it's a bit of fun. There you go. Um Mayo M C which is uh, Jack's nickname. Absolutely lots of stuff. <laughs> so there you go. Uh right, well look best of luck if you're heading up to Old Trafford on Monday evening. Uh we'll be doing it from my armchair watching that one. Uh I wonder how long I'll have it on for before switching over to Country File or whatever's on uh, the other side. We will wait and see. But we'll say goodbye to Harry Manson. Yeah, just apologies for my internet. I did drop in and out about 50 times on this stream, but I tried my best. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Hope you can only do your best. Yes. Uh, speaking of which, Dan, uh, goodbye from Dan Bayliss. The only way is up. <laughs> Maybe. 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 Uh, and Jack Williams. On that, I'm actually going to be on a plane on the only ways up at the time that the Man United game kicks off, so I won't even have to enjoy it. Good for it. you. That's yeah. one way. Just, yeah, no, just yeah, land, one check the score, it. and be sad. <laughs> yeah, <Easy. laughs> don't find lab bar. Excellent, and it is a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.